Hey folks, this is Riker with a Diablo 3 Season 28 guide to the Altar of Rites, the exciting new season feature that is shaking up Diablo 3 in a big way. Thanks to the Altar of Rites, this is my favorite season of Diablo 3 yet because it adds new objectives to chase to power up your characters in different ways while adding a new layer of choices to make. In this video, we'll go over what the Altar of Rites is and how it works. We'll give tips on how to unlock every seal on the Altar of Rites, and we'll discuss what the best progression path through the Altar of Rites is. As always, feel free to use the timestamps in the description below to skip ahead to different sections of the video. But before I move on, a quick word from this video's sponsor, True Classic, a provider of premium wardrobe essentials at accessible prices. Now, as we all know, or if you don't, pro tip, clothes that fit you well, that are tailored to your body shape, that's one of the most important things when it comes to style. We've all seen some rich dude in some designer suit that just doesn't fit him well, and it, it looks like a clown suit. True Classic Premium Tees are designed for guys' bodies. They accentuate the arms and the shoulders. I'm a slim guy. It's always been hard for me to find clothes that fit me well, that don't look big and baggy on me, but also don't squeeze my chest. A lot of the t-shirts that I typically find have these big floppy sleeves that make my arms look puny, but the fit here with True Classic just perfect. Reasonably priced clothes that fit you well will make you look better than expensive clothes that don't. And that's what True Classic's about. I got two types of tees from True Classic. One type is a cotton and polyester blend that is just super soft. I don't normally notice these things, but as soon as I grabbed the tee out of the package, I was so surprised by how soft it felt. And the other type is a performance tee for physical activity. It's mostly polyester, and it's so lightweight and soft that it feels like I'm wearing nothing, nothing at, at all. all. These are some of the comfiest tees I've ever owned, and I recommend True Classic. So shop True Classic with my link below, trueclassictees.com slash Riker, and use promo code Riker to get 25% off any full-priced True Classic item. And the promo code only lasts for 30 days, though, so act fast. So what is the Altar of Rights? In Season 28, not in non-season, but in Season Specific, in Act 1, if you travel to the left into this little nook over here, you're going to find a new object that you can interact with, the Altar of Rites. Click this and it brings up a new skill tree filled with seals. Each of these seals carries a bonus that will apply to all of your characters on that season. For instance, the first seal, Gateway, will make your killstreak timer duration and reward bonus be doubled. Or this seal over here, Anointed, makes it such that items have no level requirement. This is fantastic for leveling a character from 1 to 70. In fact, in the video that we put out yesterday on the fastest way to level from 1 to 70, we talk about using these two seals, Gateway and Anointed, to blast your way to 70 in no time. Do be sure to check out that video for a full guide on how to zip your way to 70. But for now, let's keep talking about the altar. To unlock a seal, you need to sacrifice something at the Altar of Rites, generally different kinds of crafting materials, and the costs go up and up as you progress down the altar. Now you'll be progressing through this altar like a skill tree, moving from seal to seal, unlocking your path, building your way down, until eventually you start to unlock access to potion powers. For instance, this potion in the middle, the Mortal Potion, makes it such that when you drink your health potion, all enemies within 25 yards of you will then deal 25% less damage. Eventually, you'll be able to unlock every seal in the altar, at which point you'll gain access to the final seal, which not only gives you access to some sexy cosmetic wings, but also makes it such that whenever a primal item drops, a second random primal drops as well double primals. This effect unlocks automatically once you've gotten every seal and potion unlocked. Now, as you're unlocking different seals, it is not that every seal has a particular cost. It's that whatever is your second seal has a specific cost. Your third, your fourth, your fifth. In other words, you can have two people taking two different paths through the Altar of Rites, but their tenth seal will be costing the same amount. This means you'll want to be strategic about the order in which you pick your seals, since in general it becomes progressively more difficult to meet the requirements for unlocking the next seal. In general, you'll probably try to make your way towards the bottom of the tree sooner before the costs get too high. Now, community member Coleco made this handy tool here with the Altar of Rites wherein you can actually 
plot your own progress through the altar. You can see the cost of every seal. You can see what every seal does. I'm going to link this in the description below. And so as you can see, as you plot out your path, as you unlock seals, you have to move down like a skill tree. In other words, to unlock a seal, you must have a seal that connects to it from above or from the side. In general, the better seals are towards the bottom, but this is not always the case. Most of these seals are pretty straightforward in what they do, but we'll cover a couple of them that are not 100% clear. So this seal over here, Mirror, this makes pools of reflection last for the entire season, and they're not removed when you die. Initially, there was some confusion about how this worked. There were different interpretations, but when we got to the test server, what this means is as soon as you pick up a single pool of reflection, you have the effects of the pool of reflection for the entire season. It never runs out and never goes away. Pools of reflection are those golden pools that you click on that give you a temporary XP buff. This seal over here, Revelation, gives you passability. Passability means that you can just walk through enemies. They don't block your path. Basically, it's treated as though you're wearing illusory boots. You may move unhindered through enemies. This also lets you walk through waller walls. Then the double primals, that unlocks automatically once you've gotten every seal and potion. Now, as for those potions, we spoke about the mother potion. Once you pop your potion, all enemies within 25 yards of you will deal 25% less damage and this effect lasts for 10 seconds. And these potion effects all stack, so you're benefiting from your regular potion. If you have a legendary potion already, you get that benefit too. And on top of that, you're also getting the mortal effect once you unlock that. And you'll also get the mother and the father effect when you unlock those as well. The mother effect. If you were around for season 18, the season of the triune that made those circles of different colors appear on the floor with different buffs, this brings that back in potion form. You trigger it with your potion. It'll make one of three colored circles spawn on the floor, and if you stand in that circle, you'll gain a specific buff. If you see a green circle, that's the resource cost reduction circle. You'll have 50% resource cost reduction while standing in it. If you see a blue circle, that's cooldown reduction. And if you see a pink circle, that's going to double your damage while you're standing inside of it. Then the Father Potion. Once you pop that, you're going to gain a random shrine effect or benefit from the effects of a power pylon for 16 seconds. Now, unlike a regular power pylon, this effect cannot be buffed by the flavor of time to double its duration. However, the shrine effects can benefit from the Gloves of Worship, which would make them last for 10 minutes. This will make you want to wear Gloves of Worship, but if you're playing solo, you pop those on your follower, they emanate to us. That means it's treated as though we're wearing it for purpose of the legendary power. And since you can pop your potion once every 30 seconds, that's something else that these potion powers do. They allow you to pop your potion even when you're at max health. You can pop these once every 30 seconds and therefore you will eventually benefit from all of the shrine effects as it randomly rotates through them. So the Enlightened Shrine will give you 25% more XP. The Fleeting Shrine will give you 25% more move speed and plus 20 to pickup radius. The Frenzied Shrine will give you plus 25% attack speed. The Blessed Shrine will give you plus 25% damage reduction. And the Empowered Shrine will give you plus 50% cooldown reduction and plus 100% resource generation. Shrine effects normally last for two minutes, meaning you'd be able to pop your potion four times before one of them runs out, so you would not be able to benefit from all of them at the same time. But again, if you can work in the Gloves of Worship, this actually presents some really interesting options for solo builds, particularly those that rely on cooldown reduction. All right, so that's the intro for the altar itself. Now let's talk about the costs to unlock the different seals. A lot of these are straightforward. Remember, it's not that a specific seal has a specific cost, but that the costs correspond to a specific numbered sequence. So your first seal will cost 10 reusable parts. Your second will cost a diamond of flawless quality or greater. Your third seal will cost one greater rift keystone and 10 death's breaths. Your fourth will cost any class specific helm. Your fifth will cost 20 forgotten souls and 10 of each bounty material. So far, these have all been pretty straightforward, I hope. Then for the sixth, you need one Leoric's Regret, one Vial of Putridness, one Idol of Terror, and one Heart of Fright. These are the Uber Drops. So a quick crash course on how to run the Ubers. 
In order to fight the uber bosses, you first need to get keys to access their realm. So you're going to fight the key wardens in order to collect keys. There are four different key wardens, one in Act 1, 2, 3, and 4. In Act 1, you can find the key warden in the Fields of Misery, in Act 2, in the Dal Ghul Oasis, in Act 3, in Stonefort, and Act 4, in the Gardens of Hope Second Tier. You don't have to memorize that, you can just see the actual key on the map. Each of these key wardens will drop infernal machines. Once you've got one of each, put these in your inventory, then head to Act 1. Once in town, run over here to the Hermit's Abode over to the right. Click on the door, damage it to open it, then enter. Once inside, you see this occult area. Bring up your inventory and then right click on each infernal machine. This will open up four different portals. If you're concerned about being disconnected before you can do all four, open them up and do them one at a time. Inside, you'll fight the uber bosses and those ubers will drop the Oryx Regret, Vial of Putridness, Idol of Terror, and Heart of Fright. You normally use these materials to craft Hellfire amulets, but now we're looking to sacrifice them at the Altar of Rites. Then to unlock the seventh seal, you need Reaper's Wraps. Reaper's Wraps is a craftable item. You will not get these as a random drop. In order to get the recipe to craft Reaper's Wraps at the blacksmith, you need to kill Malthiel. Malthiel drops the plan, and it doesn't matter what difficulty you do this on. You'll find Malthiel in Act 5, the Pandemonian Fortress, Level 3. The 8th seal requires 30 Forgotten Souls. The 9th requires 1,100 Blood Shards. Now, it should be specified you always have to pay the cost in one go. You can't save up 500 Blood Shards, submit 500, get another 500, and submit those. It has to be 1,100 all at once. Now, your Blood Shard cap starts at 500. You raise this cap by completing Solo Greater Rifts. In order to increase your cap to be able to hold 1,100 Blood Shards, you have to do a GR60 solo. The 10th seal will cost you 1 Flawless Royal Ruby, 20 Death's Breaths, and 1 Ring of Royal Grandeur. The Ring of Royal Grandeur does not drop. You can't get it from Kadala. You're going to get it from Act 1 Bounty Bags. The 11th seal costs 1 Flawless Royal Emerald and 30 of each Bounty Material. The 12th seal costs 20 Greater Rift Keys and 1 Ramaladni's Gift. Now so far for the other seals, things are pretty deterministic, but Ramaladni's Gift you're really at the mercy of randomness, of RNG. So while it's gonna hurt, the first Ramaladni that you get, you'll probably want to save it to unlock this seal. Because you don't know when you're gonna get another. It can take hundreds of Paragon levels if you're unlucky. The 13th seal requires 1,300 blood shards. That's a GR80 solo. The 14th seal requires one petrified scream. Similar to the Ramalani's, this is a random drop. It's got about the same odds of dropping as a Ramalani. If you haven't played in a while and you don't know what a petrified scream is, this is another form of key. You use a petrified scream to open a portal to an echoing nightmare. You don't have to worry about that just yet, but we'll talk more about it later. Again, though, it means the first one that you find, you're going to want to save it and not use it in order to sacrifice it at the altar. Then the 15th seal requires one challenge rift cache. As we discussed in our leveling video, my suggestion is if you're playing Friday night, use a challenge rift cache to give you a super fast 1 to 70 journey. And then by the time Monday rolls around, you'll be able to do a new challenge rift and get a new challenge rift cache and then you can use that one to sacrifice at the altar. Some people will say that they want to save their Challenge Rift cache on Friday in order to unlock the 15th seal over the weekend. If they're planning to blast for 20 plus hours over the weekend, high level, efficient, intense, speedy play, sure. If you're not in that category, if you're the 99% of the population, wait for Monday to get your second Challenge Rift cache to unlock the 15th seal. You might not even be at the 15th seal by the time Monday rolls around. And if you did use up the cache and then you do find yourself blocked at the 15th seal over the weekend, you can still continue to farm up the materials for the next seals and then just unlock a bunch of them at once once you get the new Challenge Rift cache on Monday. So the 16th seal requires 250 Forgotten Souls. The 17th requires 1,400 Blood Shards. That's a GR90 solo. Now. I know some people are starting to freak out now. They've never done a GR90 solo before. I believe in you. 
You can do this. Maybe not on the first weekend, maybe not on the second weekend, but I guarantee you if you follow one of the build guides we put out, you will be able to handle a GR90 and beyond because it's going to keep going up here. Then the 18th seal requires one ancient Hellfire amulet. So we just spoke earlier about how to do the Ubers. So you're going to farm up those Uber materials. And then in Act 2, you're going to go talk to Squirt the Peddler and purchase the plan for the Hellfire amulet. You're going to teach this plan to the jeweler and then you're going to craft Hellfire amulets. Maybe you'll get lucky and the first one will be ancient, but on average, one out of every ten of these turns out to be ancient. So you keep crafting until you get an ancient one and then you can sacrifice it. Then for the 19th, you need four set dungeon pages. Now, a set dungeon page can be acquired by having a six-piece set equipped and then traveling to Leoric Manor in Act 1. So from the map, go to Leoric Manor Courtyard, enter Leoric Manor towards the top left, go up the stairwell and towards the northeast, and then reach this zone that you see here on the map where you'll find the Tome of Set Dungeons. Click it and it will drop a page. In order for a page to drop, you must be benefiting from the six-piece bonus of a set. You can do this by having five pieces equipped and a Ring of Royal Grandeur. You'll need to do this a total of four times, each time with a different set, because you'll always get the same page to drop if you're using the same set. Now, it should be mentioned that not every set will have one of these pages. It corresponds to which sets have set dungeons. So a simple way to remember this season, all the Hadrix gift sets do not have set dungeons or pages. So you cannot use the following sets for this. The Typhon set for Wizard, the Justice set for Monk, the Valor set for Crusader, the Masquerade set for Necromancer, the Gears of the Dreadland set for the Demon Hunter, the Horde of the 90 Savages set for the Barbarian, or the Mundunugu set for the Witch Doctor. All other class sets will drop a page. So you can get either four of the same class, or you can get pages from different classes. All you need is four different pages in total. Then, for the 20th seal, you need an Ancient Puzzle Ring and 50 of each bounty material. For the 21st seal, you need 500 Death's Breaths and 300 Forgotten Souls. For the 22nd seal, you need 1,500 Blood Shards. This is a GR100 solo. You can do it. For the 23rd seal, you need a Rank 125 Whisper of Atonement. What is a Whisper of Atonement? It's something that you get from an Echoing Nightmare. Again, you'll find randomly as a drop a Petrified Scream. You put a Petrified Scream into Kanai's cube and that opens a portal to an Echoing Nightmare. An Echoing Nightmare is a small zone where you fight waves of enemies of increasing difficulty. At the end of an Echoing Nightmare, you get, as a reward of completion, a Whisper of Atonement. These will drop at different levels depending on the wave of Echoing Nightmare that you complete it. So if you complete Wave 100, you get a Rank 100 Whisper of Atonement. Whispers of Atonement are effectively legendary gems that do nothing, but can be used as a substitute for the recipe that augments your gear. So instead of leveling up and sacrificing a legendary gem to use as an augment, you instead can use a Whisper of Atonement. And the maximum rank of Whisper of Atonement that you can get is 125. So when you're running a Petrified Scream, you want to complete Wave 125, then you can die, it's okay, you're going to get your max rank Whisper of Atonement. For a quick Whisper of Atonement strategy guide, managing the four pylons that you get will be critical to getting you all the way to 125. So the first thing you want to do when you load in to an Echoing Nightmare is pay attention to where the four pylons have spawned. There's going to be a Speed Pylon, a Power Pylon, a Channeling Pylon, and a Conduit Pylon. Ideally, you don't want to be touching any of these before Wave 100. Once you reach Wave 100, grab the Speed Pylon and then grab the Power Pylon. Once your Power Pylon buff comes to an end, or if you're struggling and you fear you're going to fail the Echoing Nightmare because if you take too long to kill enemies, a bar fills up as more and more enemies spawn. Then you go pop the final two pylons, the Conduit and the Channeling Pylon. Now one trick to avoid having that Overwhelmed Bar fill up by having too many monsters spawn, scout the perimeter of the map. Every so often, a machine is going to spawn that summons a bunch of little monsters. 
if you leave that there to keep summoning monsters, that bar is going to fill up a lot faster. So don't just sit in one corner. Move around, scout around, and you can actually follow the stream of exploding little monsters leading back to their little spawner. Then the 24th seal requires any augmented weapon. When talking about augments, we're referring to the Kanai's Cube recipe, Caldescent's Despair. You take an ancient weapon, you take a legendary gem or a Whisper of Atonement of at least rank 30, three flawless royal gems of the same type, slap that in the cube, it'll augment the item. The gem type doesn't matter because we're trashing this item. I mean, sacrificing it at the altar for wonderful, wonderful rewards. Then the 25th seal requires the Staff of Herding. This is what's going to trip up a lot of people. The Staff of Herding requires farming a number of components, and it can take hours of grinding. Most of these runs you're going to have to do over and over and over again until you get the drop. The good news is that the difficulty doesn't matter, so you can run these on normal for maximum speed. The first item that you need is the recipe, the plan for the Staff of Herding. You're going to get the Staff of Herding plan from Izuul in Act 4, the Silver Spire Level 1. Once you get the plan, teach it to your blacksmith. Next, you need the materials, the Black Mushroom, Lyoric's Shinbone, Wurt's Bell, Liquid Rainbow, and the dreaded Gibbering Gemstone. To get the Black Mushroom, you go to Act 1, Cathedral Level 1. The Mushroom always spawns in a zone that has this shape here. If you don't find that zone, exit game, remake, and you're going to have to keep farming this until you find it. Next, you need to get Leoric's Shinbone. Unless you're on console, apparently you guys are just lucky. It's not a requirement for the Staff of Hurting on console. But you'll get Leoric's Shinbone from Leoric's Manor in Act 1. So take the waypoint to Leoric's Manor Courtyard. Enter Leoric's Manor to the northwest. Then once you're inside, take the first right. You're going to enter a little chamber that has a fireplace with Leoric's portrait hanging over it. If there are burnt logs in the fireplace, click on them and they'll drop Leoric's Shinbone. If there's no logs, exit and try again. Next, you'll need Wurt's Bell, which is a lot easier to get. Go to the town in Act 2. Talk to Squirt the Peddler, and under Miscellaneous, you can buy Wurt's Bell for 100,000 gold. Next, you need Liquid Rainbow, or if you're on console, you don't need it. You get the Liquid Rainbow to drop from a mysterious chest that you find in the mysterious cave in the Dalgu Oasis in Act 2. Now, to find this, what you're going to do is keep resetting your game until the bounty appears in Act 2 that says, Clear the Mysterious Cave. Once you see that bounty, then you know for sure that the Mysterious Cave actually spawned. Once you get the bounty, go to the Dalgor Oasis. You're going to be led to a guy called Zaven the Alchemist. You'll find him in a little nook that looks like this. You'll fight some monsters and then he'll stop cowering like a coward. You talk to him and after he blabbers for a while, he'll open a door to the Mysterious Cave Level 1. In here, you might find the Mysterious Chest. It's called the Mysterious Chest. If it doesn't spawn in here, try again. Once you open that Mysterious Chest, it'll drop the Liquid Rainbow. The Mysterious Chest can also spawn on the second level of the Mysterious Cave. Then lastly, the most challenging one, the Gibbering Gemstone. This item has a low chance to drop from an enemy called Chiltara, who you'll find in the Caverns of Frost level 2, which is in Act 3's Fields of Slaughter. To get to the Fields of Slaughter, you take the waypoint in Act 3, the Bridge of Corsic. From there, you go up and to the right. And you're going to scout out this zone for the Caverns of Frost. Now, only two dungeons can spawn in this zone. The Caverns of Frost or the Icefall Caves. If you see the Icefall Caves, exit immediately and try again. In fact, you can save yourself some time as well if you see the bounty that leads you to the Icefall Caves. Then you don't even need to go to the zone at all. You can just leave and remake. The bounty for the Icefall Caves only spawns if the Icefall Caves spawn. And if the Icefall Caves spawn, there's no Caverns of Frost. To speed up your scouting for the Caverns of Frost, take a look at this pattern. These are the six possible spawn locations for the Caverns of Frost. So run a little circuit around the zone, looking in those six areas. If you find the Icefall Caves, exit immediately. If you find the Caverns of Frost, enter. And just keep remaking until you get those Caverns of Frost. Chiltara is a unique Lacuni Huntress who normally spawns on level 2 of the Caverns of Frost and she only has a chance to drop the Gibbering Gemstone. So this will be the most difficult step of acquiring the Staff of Herding. However, once you get that final component, then just head to the blacksmith, craft the staff, and sacrifice it at the altar. 
Then the final seal, the 26th, requires 1,600 blood shards, which requires clearing a GR110 solo. Again, I believe in you, you can do this. Every build guide that I put out, every build guide video, can easily clear a GR110 if you put in the time to get that gear together. Level up your gems a bit, level up your paragon a bit. I was able to do a GR110 solo on the PTR with less than 800 paragon, with only one ancient item, and I'm not a pro player. I'm an analyst, I'm a coach, I'm a teacher. I'm very passionate about Diablo 3, but I don't have the skills of these pros. So if I can do it, you can do it too. All you need is the knowledge, and we lay out that knowledge in the videos. Now to unlock the potions, these actually sidestep the sacrifice requirements for the seals. In other words, unlocking your three potions will be independent of the cost for the seals. The first potion you unlock will cost 55 primordial ashes, the second will cost 110 primordial ashes, and the last one will cost 165 primordial ashes. Primordial ashes are a new material you get for salvaging primal items. And this combines nicely with a new cube recipe that lets you actually craft a primal item. I know you'll be tempted to do that right away, but I'd suggest saving your primordial ashes to get your potions first, as those effects are going to be stronger than having a primal weapon. The new recipe, Curiosity of Lorathnar, has you put in one legendary item, 100 primordial ashes, and that'll randomly re-roll the item, but into primal quality. So it'll be the same item, a convention of elements remains a convention of elements, but the attributes might be different. So instead of strength crit cooldown, you might get strength crit chance crit damage. Now, salvaging a primal item gives you 55 primordial ashes. Once you complete a GR70 solo, you're going to get your guaranteed one primal item of the season. Since for most people it's garbage, you can instantly sacrifice that, get the 55 primordial ashes, and then get your first potion. All right, now, lastly, we're going to cover the order in which you're going to want to unlock the seals and potions in the Altar of Rites. Let's start off quickly with the potions because it's simpler. The first potion you'll want to unlock, again with your 55 primordial ashes that you'll get from salvaging your first garbage primal, is going to be the Father Potion. Those pylon effects could be really strong, and depending on what you get can result in a significant damage increase. The second potion you'll want is the Mother Potion. While the circles are also really strong, most of what you're doing is going to be high mobility content, and the circles are very stationary. These are very useful for when you're fighting bosses or when you're pushing greater rifts, but if you're zipping along in a speed greater rift or in a regular rift, you're not going to have time to stand around in circles. And then lastly, you get the Mortal Potion. In general here, I'm going to recommend always picking offense over defense. If you're playing hardcore, maybe you'll want to consider this one before the Mother Potion, but otherwise, offense almost always beats defense. If you kill enemies before they can hurt you, then you don't need any defense. And you're going to see that pattern repeated in my picks now throughout the altar seals. But I'll put a disclaimer here. You know yourself. You know your playstyle. What I lay out here is not gospel. If there's something that you think is going to really benefit your playstyle, you can prioritize that. But I'll talk through my picks here. So we have no choice for the first. For the second one, you definitely want to go for the no item level requirements. Again, this makes your 1 to 70 a breeze. And even if you're going to get a power level and skip the 1 to 70 altogether, well, I still recommend taking this as your second because as your third, I recommend taking the 25% move speed buff. Now, some people instead recommend taking the permanent XP pools as your number three. While it is true this will help you level up your Paragon points faster, once you hit level 70, your main priority isn't to farm up a ton of Paragon levels yet, it's mostly to get geared. Paragon farming comes in later. 25% faster move speed at a time when you're not stacking a lot of move speed or a lot of mobility is going to make you do everything faster. You're getting to bounties faster. You're going through rifts and greater rifts faster. So you're incidentally getting XP faster as well. Then for number four, we'll get the Blood Seal. Picking up a health globe grants a shield for 5% of your maximum health for seven seconds. This is just a stopgap. We have to take it in order to keep going. Because next you want to take Nature. Increases your highest elemental skill damage bonus by 10%. This is a nice damage buff, but more importantly, it's a node on the way to number six, Double 
bounty caches. Getting a lot of bounty materials early on not only helps us gear, but you're going to need a lot of bounty materials to sacrifice at the altar. So the sooner we get these double bounty materials, the less bounties we'll have to do in order to sacrifice at the altar. Now at this point, we want to build a path downward to unlock the potions. So we're going to go number seven, the crowd control immunity. This is a very powerful effect on its own. While you can label it as defensive, being immune to crowd control is actually really useful. Next, we're going to go for the node that gives you passability. So enemies can crowd control you, and now you can walk through them without any trouble. They don't block your path. Again, though, the main reason we're getting this as a priority over other things is because we're building towards the potions. And number nine, you have double the chance of finding a legendary item from Kadala. Again, early season, this is very helpful towards gearing. So at that point, you're just one primal away from unlocking your first potion effect, Father. Do that as soon as you have the materials for it. For our 10th node, we're going to take the one that gives you 30% more damage. Not only is that just great by itself, but it's also building towards our second potion and our number 11, which will give us one extra progress orb from elite packs. What does that mean? That means you're going to be doing rifts and greater rifts even faster. Every progress orb gives you a jump of progress on your rift bar. Faster greater rifts means faster XP, means faster blood shards, means faster everything. Then for number 12, we're going to take this seal here that will make your pet pick up and salvage common magic and rare items automatically. Be sure to have equipped a pet for this to happen. While this does not give any direct power, this saves you so much time because you don't have to stop to click on all these things. You don't have to salvage them at the blacksmith. You don't have to make room for legendaries. You don't have to be ignoring these drops. You are just going to be passively building up your horde of basic crafting materials. All the little amount of time you're taking here and there to click on, pick up all these common items, then salvage them at the blacksmith. All of that adds up over the course of a season. This is a great quality of life boon that also will help get you further ahead faster. Then 13, this is when we unlock our permanent XP pools. By this point into a season, you're going to be farming Greater Rifts. Greater Rifts are what give you the most XP. You just had to sacrifice 20 Greater Rift Keys to unlock the 12th seal. So now you're finally getting to run a bunch of Greater Rifts. All right, then for number 14, we're going to get the 25% melee damage reduction. We don't really care about this, it's defensive, but we need it to get to number 15, double the amount of death breaths that drop. At this point of a season, we want to be maximizing how much time we're spending in Greater Rifts. Speed Greater Rifts is the most effective thing that you can do in this game for everything. For XP, for getting blood shards and thus item drops, leveling up your gems, leveling up your augments, but you don't get death breaths from Greater Rifts. So doubling the amount of death breaths that you get means you're spending less time doing regular Rifts, and thus more time doing greater rifts. Then for 16, we're going to get the plus 20% more damage. Nice damage buff. For 17, we'll get plus 20% elite damage. A nice damage buff, but just against elites. Similarly, 18 plus 15% elite damage. Elites are always our little speed bumps when we're going through a greater rift. So accelerating the pace at which we take them down helps. For 19, we're going to take the progress orbs from Nephilim and greater rifts automatically being picked up. We were talking before about seconds here and there that add up over time. If you have to walk over to pick up a progress orb, if you're going so fast and you have to backtrack to pick up a progress orb, these all add up over time, especially if you're doing two minute greater rifts. Having to stop, go back, pick up an orb starts to eat into your time. Auto orbs saves you all these seconds that add up to minutes and hours over the course of a season. Then number 20, Pets automatically pick up Death's Breaths. This is similar. You can be going through a regular rift. Instead of having to stop to click and pick up your Death's Breaths, your pets will automatically pick them up. It's also a massive quality of life feature that a lot of people have been asking for. For 21, we're going for plus 25% boss damage. It's a nice damage buff, but it's highly situational, which is why we didn't put this earlier. Then for 22, we're taking plus 200 damage. To put that into context, if your weapon deals 3000 damage, then plus 200 damage is less than a 10% damage buff. It's still a damage buff, but it's certainly not the sexiest one to pick. And at this point, we're just left with the defensive buffs. So we're going to go for 23, reduces damage from elites by 25%. 
In general, what's most likely to kill you is going to be an elite. For 24, we'll take 15% dodge chance. This is just a global 15% chance to avoid any damage. Not great for hardcore. Then for 25, we'll take plus 25% missile damage reduction. And lastly, number 26, resource on crit. Now, this one is situational. Some builds would benefit from this tremendously. In that case, you would actually want to get that as your seventh node and then just offset everything else by one. You continue then on to the crowd control immunity as number eight, etc. Again, though, that's the path I recommend. But if, for instance, you absolutely despise picking up death's breaths and you want to bump auto death's breaths higher up on the list, I'm not going to tell you to sacrifice your quality of life. If you're playing hardcore and you want to go for more of those defensive nodes, they really do add up to quite a bit of toughness. But otherwise, that's going to wrap up this video. As a reminder, we got a bunch of build guides out for Season 28. And you can always go to Riker.com to find all of my build videos. I don't have a Season 28 guide for every build, but on my website, most of those videos there are still applicable for Season 28. If you see Season 28 in the title of the video, it still applies. I got my fast leveling video to get from 1 to 70, and I'll have the tier list video on the best builds of Season 28 coming out either tomorrow or Friday. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my Twitch, Patreon, and YouTube supporters for making these videos possible. If you like what you see on this channel and want to support the creation of more content, you can consider pledging on YouTube or Patreon and unlocking behind the scenes content, monthly virtual hangouts, and more. If you enjoyed this video, please share it. Check out these other videos and subscribe to join Rikers Raiders for more Diablo content.